When people think about history, they often think back to their school days, to the long list of useless dates and numbers they had to learn. When you hear most politicians saying, history has taught us, you know that they're about to tell you a gross oversimplification of a historical event. And snake oil sellers love to tell us real life stories to convince us to buy into whatever product or ideology they are selling us. No surprise that people tend to love fiction and have no time for history. But fictional and real stories serve two different purposes. In this video, we'll look into these purposes, into whether one type of story is better than the other, into examples to help us understand how to get the most out of both words, into the reasons why I care so much about telling you real life stories from the music world. Hello Top Potters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in composition and musicology who likes to think out loud with you. A fictional story is the perfect vehicle to teach us something or to inspire us to act in a certain way. Mythology, parables, TV series, films, novels, they all do this. Sometimes allegorically, giving you space to think for yourself. Sometimes directly coming out straight at you with a message at the end of the action. Like those old TV shows linked in the description. This has been used through the ages to propagate the values our society cares about, or those that it pays lip service to. Example. In the Doctor Strange comics, Strange learns that temper is egoism, egotism, megalomania and arrogance. He becomes a hero by understanding the value of helping other people and serving a higher goal. The bottom line is that you should always do the same. How about real stories? Contrary to what your teacher told you, history doesn't teach you anything. Real life stories offer you insight and let you do the hard work. Examples. Arrogance and pride made Axel Rose fall out with the rest of the original Guns N' Roses. The result was a lot of money spent in lawsuits and 15 years lost completing the Chinese Democracy album. The story is almost legendary in music circles, but there are plenty of real examples of arrogant and uncompromising protagonists that end differently. If Ice Cube had been a bit more mindful of his bandmates, he would have never left NWA after leaving the collective and after a vitriolic public feud climaxing in one of the harshest diss tracks in rap history, Cube's career exploded. His albums were top sellers, he acted in some 40 films and he achieved money and fame as a key protagonist of the gangster rap era. So, what's the lesson here? Should you be forceful, arrogant, have your way at all costs or be compromising, humble and think about other people first? The real stories of Axel Rose and Ice Cube tell us that there is no right answer, that you are the only judge of what resonates the most with you and the situation you're in. I'm sure you can think of more examples pointing one way or the other. Share them with us with a comment so that we can get a discussion going. Fictional stories follow a clean story arch. This obviously happens because they are a vehicle for teaching, but there are logical reasons to. A tale has to have internal coherence. Every element is there for a reason. Present you the characters, pave the way to a future twist, give you a reason for what happens next. We can connect most events in a fictional story through a chain of cause and effect. For example, think of Frodo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings. Why is he given the One Ring to begin with? Because Bilbo chose him as his adoptive heir. Why does Frodo start his journey? Because Gandalf the Grey tells him to leave his home in the Shire and meet him in Bree. 
and so on until the end of Frodo's story. Frodo's adventures are built to be a perfect example of the hero's journey. Frodo faces trials and temptations, he overcomes them, he becomes a real hero, he leaves the limelight. Compare that with George Harrison's real-life story. Why did he become a Beatle? Because he happened to know Paul McCartney. How did he get involved with Indian culture? The Beatles happened to hear some Indian music in the restaurant scene of the Help film. Why did the band break up? After 50 plus years, people are still debating on that and no reason seemed more consequential than the others. Why did George leave the limelight and music for years? No drama here, he just lost interest. How did he die? Cancer. He had won his initial battle with the disease, but then a lunatic stabbed him in his home, thinking Harrison was an alien. The body shock made the cancer come back. People that have come in contact with the disease know that sometimes these things happen without rhyme, no reason. But this must be the most senseless cause of death I have ever heard of. Real life stories often give you a bundle of illogical circumstances and coincidences. Fictional stories can appeal for their strong progressions. Real stories teach you that many events are well beyond our control. And this is the key for becoming more compassionate, kinder, and less harsh toward ourselves and other people. There is one other point of difference between fictional and real stories. Some people say that real stories give you a window on the culture complexity of our world, while fiction doesn't. This is not true. Not all the time, of course. I can read the Arabian Nights and get involved with Arab culture without pretending that Simbad or Sherazad are historical figures. But let's pretend I watch V for Vendetta. And let's pretend I have a question about the setting. For example, what are the precise details leading the Norse Fire political party into power? Well, your guess is as good as mine. We need to ask Alan Moore and hope he has the answer. Alan? Yo, what's up, dog? Look, we're talking about V for Vendetta here and we were wondering. Let's look into a real life story instead. Felakuti's stand against General Oba Sanjo's regime, for example. You can watch my video about the climax of that battle, the one I did about the album Zombie. The link is in this video's description. Well, if you have questions that I didn't answer in that video, or you simply want to know more about Oba Sanjo's rise to power, you can ask me. Feel free to leave me a comment. Or you can start looking into the sources I have put in that video's description. Or you can pick up one of the dozens of books and articles about Felakuti or Obasanjo or Nigerian history and find answers. In other words, fictional stories can give us a look into reality and the way it works. But we are looking through a closed window. Real stories allow us to look through that window and open it if we want. We can even step outside that window and jump right into a sea of knowledge. And it's all very easy in this digital age. We are surrounded by stories ever since the dawn of time. In fact, best-selling author Yuval Noah Harari argues that the ability of telling stories is what makes us human. I am not here to argue that fiction has no value. Films, comic books, novels, theater pieces, podcasts, video games, oral storytelling, they all play a key role in every society. They make our lives richer. But I cannot help arguing about the value of real life stories too. The problem is when we want to treat history like fiction and ask that real stories give us the same things fiction does. As I try to show you here, we're looking at two different beasts. Let's pretend that I gave you an exaggerated, dramatic version of real-life stories from music history, skipping important details 
like some people do. I would just be telling you a fictional story then, right? Now, if I gave you enough food for thought, give me a like to this video or leave me a comment so that I know that I've done well. But if you think I could have done a better job, please drop me a line and let me know how to get better, because that way I can give you better content that you can enjoy more. This was Simon Mas. See you soon for more real life stories from music history. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love.